The world looks on. This is part two. Okay, y'all. I don't want to lose you. All right. Lunch letters by Ida B. Wells. The world looks on and says it as well. Not only are 200 men and women put to death annually, on an average, and that's a small number compared to today, in this country by mobs, but these lies were are taken with the greatest publicity. In many instances, the leading citizens aid and abet their presence when they do not participate, and the leading journals inflame the public mind to the lynching point with scarehead articles and offers of rewards. Whenever a burning is advertised to take place, the railroads run excursions, photographs are taken, and the same jubilee is indulged in that characterized the public hangings of 100 years ago. I mean, this is so barbaric. Yeah, you know, ooh, the history, y'all, the history, it's not very nice. But this is what y'all don't want to talk about. This is what you don't want to deal with. This is the ugly elephant in the room. But I'm here today to say, come on, let's move forward because this is mental illness. This is craziness. How dare y'all be this crazy and think you can, and the chickens are not going to come home to roost all over the world. This is the greatest country in the world. Why? Because you were not very nice. You stole. On more than one occasion, you stole the land and you stole the people. And now, all the way in 200, 2,000 years later, we're still fighting over the same insane stuff. The human family is dying. Period. And we are watching it go down the drain because to me, this all the stuff I'm talking about, what Ida B. Wells bore witness to, is why I say black people, we carry a pain body. Nobody, we don't have to have this validated by anybody. Our history is reeked with pain. It's in our structure. And these people have the, they have the, oh, how do you say it? They actually have the luxury of luxury of walking around every day like this is not a reality. They don't even have to think about your reality. That's how easy it is. They don't even have to think about what you think about every day when you get up and walk out that door. They don't have to worry about the police are going to get behind them. And if they do, oh, hi, Officer John. What's wrong? My tail light is out. You don't need these people to validate you. You don't. And Ida B. Wells is telling you right now. This is 18, 1900. We are in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2000, 2018. And I can't tell, so I'm going to go ahead and finish. Whew. There is, however, this difference. In the old days, the multitude that stood by was permitted only to guide or jeer. The 19th century lynching mob cuts off ears, toes, fingers, rips off flesh, and distributes portions of the body as souvenirs among the crowd. If the leaders of the mob are so minded, coal oil is poured over the body and the victim is then roasted to death. Okay, this is what y'all want to talk about. This has been done in Tarkana and Paris, Texas, in Braswell, Kentucky, in Newman, Georgia, in Paris, the officers of the law delivered the prisoners to the mob. The mayor gave the school children a holiday and the railroads ran excursion trains so that the people might see a human being burned to death. Now they want to call us savages. Okay? And they want to say that you have no self-control and you have a criminal mind. Okay? And you want to know why. And then if they, if, if somebody says after, on my comment, but you guys hurt each other, I've said time after time, don't you think that you've driven the people? You already know. Go look at some of those tests that your scientists run. 
all the way back from Germany. The ones who put those people in the ovens and and, 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 and back then, you know what happens when you keep subjecting people to this kind of madness. You drive them mad. If the if the rats are driven mad, what do you think about a human being? You this is social engineering crafted so wickedly. <laughs> so wickedly that you constructed a civilization that now people can't talk about it. So you gotta hold in all this madness and lies and truth so somebody else can feel good about being in the room. Don't do it. Don't do it ever again. As a descendant of a slave, and now that they want to... Listen. Don't do it. Either we're going to learn to live, as Dr. King said, together in this peace, or we all going to perish like fools. Because it's going to be your turn, too. Y'all, y'all poor coal miners <laughs> that think that think that coal is coming back. Good. Give me a break. I'm sorry. I'm off on a tangent. Anyway, the mayor gave the school children, I told y'all that. Oh, my God. They ran excursions, so they cut off these people's. A year before, me and her, oh Jesus. The mayor gave the school children a holiday, and the railroads ran excursion trains so that people might see a human being burned, being burned to death. In Tecana, in Tec. Texarkana, the year before, men and boys amused themselves by cutting off strips of flesh and thrusting knives into the helpless victims. At Newman, Georgia, of the present year, the mob tried every conceivable torture to compel the victim to cry out and confess, but he would. Before they set fire to the faggots that burned him. But their trouble was all in vain. He never uttered a cry, and they could not make him confess. No, Pepper. No. This condition of affairs were brutal enough and horrible enough. If it were true that lynchings occurred only because of the commission of crimes against women, as is constantly declared by ministers, editors, lawyers, teachers, statesmen, and even women themselves, you see how they got the whole flying monkey system to help uh, de uh, 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 expedite your uh, demise. You see this? This is what I mean by the whole system is they're flying monkeys to mistreat us. We're the host. We're feeding these mad people. Just say it. They make money off our misery that they put us in. And you think I'm a blame victim? When I look at these people, you think they have the they have the pleasure and the luxury to not even think about any of this. What they did. They just they just experience a um they just experience a a life that is totally free of a pain body. Okay? And even if it is the bodies that was inflicted on the, uh, 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 the pain that was inflicted upon them by their parents. Once you get past that, you're pretty much free. <laughs> right? Once you get past that. But if you're dealing with a collective narcissism, it don't matter how much you get past your parents. You got to deal with a society that is also narcissistic, that is crazy and racist, mad. Prejudice is one thing. We all have them. We okay with that. But when you can use your power to destroy me, God, I don't know. That's in my own opinion. Let me finish this. The condition of affairs were brutal enough and horrible enough Damn. If it were true, like I said, that this occurred only because of the uh, crimes against women, as constantly declared by the ministers and the statesmen, it has been to the interest of those who did the lynching to blacken the good name of helpless and defenseless victims of their hate. For this reason, they published at every possible opportunity this excuse for lynching, hoping 
by their not only to um, not only to palliate their own crime, but at the same time to prove the Negro a moral monster and unworthy of respect and sympathy of a civilized world. But this alleged reason as to the deliberate injustice of the mob's work. Instead of lynching being caused by assaults upon women, the statistics show that not one third of the victims of lynchings are even charged with such crimes. The Chicago Tribune, which publishes annual lynching statistics, is authority for the following. In 1892, when lynchings reached a high watermark, there were 241 persons lynched. The entire number was divided among the following states. Okay, uh, Alabama uh, was 22, Arkansas 25, California 3, Florida 11, Georgia 17, or Idaho 8, Illinois 1, Kansas 3, Kentucky 9, Louisiana 29, Maryland 1, Mississippi 16, Missouri 6, Montana 4, New York 1, North Carolina 5, North Dakota 1, Ohio 3, South Carolina 5, Tennessee 28, Texas 15, Virginia 7, West Virginia 5, Wyoming 9, Arizona 3, Oklahoma 2. Of this number, 160 were of Negro descent. Four of them were lynched in New York, Ohio, and Kansas. The remainder were murdered in the South. Five of this number were females. The charges for which they were lynched cover a wide range. They are as follows. Rape, murder, rioting, race prejudice, no cause given, um, incendiarism, robbery, assault, um, and battery. One, no offense stated, boy and a girl. Uh, two, attempted rape, 11, um, suspected robbery, four, larceny, self-defense, insulting women, uh, desperados, fraud, and attempted murder. In the case of a boy and a girl above referred to, their father named Hastings was accused of the murder of a white man. His 14-year-old daughter and 16-year-old son were hanged and their bodies were filled with bullets. Then the father was also lynched. This occurred in November 1892 in Jonesville, Louisiana. Indeed, the record for the last 20 years shows exactly the same sm or smaller proportion who have been charged with the horrible crime. Quite a number of the one-third alleged cases of assault that have been personally investigated by the writer have shown that there, that there was no foundation in fact for the charges. Yet, the claim is not made that there were no real culprits among them. The Negro has been too long associated with the white man to, to not have copied his vices as well as his virtues. It's crazy. But the Negro resists and utterly repudiates the efforts to blacken his good name by asserting that assaults upon women are particular to his race. The Negro has suffered far more from the commission of this crime against the woman of his race by white men than the white race has ever suffered through his crimes. The very same voice is taken of the matter when this is the condition of affairs. What becomes a crime deserving capital punishment when the tables are turned is a matter of a small moment when the Negro woman is the accusing party. But since the world has accepted this false and unjust treatment and statement, the burden of proof has been placed upon the Negro to vindicate his race. He has taken steps to do so. The Anti-Lynching Bureau of the National Afro-American Council is arranging to have every lynching investigated and publish the facts to the, new, to the world, as has been done in the case of Sam Holes, who was burned alive April in April in Newman, Georgia. The detective's report showed that the hold that Holes killed Cranford, his employer, in self-defense, and that while a mob was organizing to hunt Holes and punish him for killing that white man, not till 24 hours after the murder was the charge of rape embellished with psychological and physical impossibility circulated. 
That gave impetus to the hunt. And the Atlanta Constitution reward of $500 keyed the mob to the necessary burning and the roasting pitch. Of 500 newspaper clippings of the horrible affair, nine-tenths of them assumed Hose's guilt simply because his murder said so, and because it is the fashion to believe the Negro particularly added to his species is crime. All the Negro asks is for his justice, a fair and impartial trial in the courts of the country. That given, he will abide the result. But this question affects the entire American nation and from several points of view. First, on the ground of consistency, watch, our watchword has been the land of the free and the home of the brave. Brave men do not gather by the thousands to torture and murder a single individual, so gagged and bound that he cannot even make feeble resistance or even defense. Neither do brave men uh, stand by with women and do such things without uh, compunction or conscience, nor read of them without protest. Our nation has been active and outspoken in its endeavors to right the wrongs of the Armenian Christian, the Russian Jew, the Irish home ruler, the native women of India, the Siberian exile, and the Cuban patriot. Surely, it would be the nation's duty to correct its own evils. Second, on the ground of the economy, to those who fail to be convinced of any other, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> any other, <coughs> one more, <coughs> any other points of view touching this momentum question, a consideration of the economic phase might not be amiss. It is generally known that mobs in Louisiana, Colorado, Wyoming, and other states have lynched subjects to, of other countries. When their different governments demanded satisfaction, our country was forced to confess, confess her inability to protect said subjects in several states because our state rights doctrines, or in turn demand punishment of the lynchers. This confession while humili hum humiliating in the extreme, was not satisfactory. And while the United States cannot protect, she can pay. She has done so, and it is certain we'll have to do again in the case of recent lynching of Italians in Louisiana. See, remember, well, it's another story for another day. The United States has already paid in indemnities for lynching nearly a half a million <clears throat> and nearly a half a million dollars for the following people. Okay, that's Chinese people. Um, they beat up, um, paid nearly a um, million dollars for the Italian massacre uh, in New Orleans. They paid Italy for the lynchings in Wasserburg, Colorado. Third, for the honor of the Anglo-Saxon civilization, no scoffer at our boasted American civilization could say anything more harsh than it does of the American white man himself who says he is unable to protect the honor of his women without resort to brutal, such brutal, inhumane, and degrading in exhibitions to characterize lynching beings. The cannibals of the South Sea Island roast human beings alive to satisfy hunger. The red Italian of the Western Plains tied to his prisoner to a stake tortured him and danced in fetish glean while his vic victim withered in the flames. His savage, untutored mind suggested no better way than that of wreaking vengeance upon those who had wronged him. These people knew nothing about Christianity and did not profess to know its teachings. But such primary laws as they have lived up to, no nation, savage or civilized, save only the United States of America, has confessed its inability to protect its women, save by hanging, shooting, and burning of alleged offenders. Finally, no, Peppa, no! No!
Finally, for love of country, no American travels abroad without blushing for shame for his country on this subject. And whatever the excuse that passes current in the United States, it avails nothing abroad. With all the powers of government in control, with all the laws made by white men, administered by white men, jurors, prosecuting attorneys, and sheriffs, with every office of the executive department filled and held by white men, no excuse can be offered for exchanging the orderly administration of justice for barbarism, lynching, and unwritten laws. The country should be placed speedily above the plane of confessing herself as a failure at self-government. This cannot be until America of every section or broadest patriotism and best and the wisest of citizenship not only see and detect in our country's armor, but to take necessary steps to remedy it. Although lynchings have, been st have steadily increased in numbers and the barbarity during the last 20 years, there has been no single effort put forth by any moral or philanthropic forces of the country to put a stop to this wholesale slaughter of Negroes. Indeed, the silence is seeming condemnation grow more marked as the years go by. Silence is consent. A few months ago, the conscience of this country was shocked because after a two weeks trial, a French judicial tribunal announced Captain Dreyfus guilty. And yet, in our own land, under our own flag, the writer can give day and detail of 1,000 men, women, and children who during the last year, six years were put to death without a trial before the, any tribunal on earth. Humiliating indeed, but altogether unanswerable was the reply of the French press to our protest. Stop your lynchings at home before you send your protest abroad. Kind of pretty much what we do today. We try to police other countries and all this craziness is going on in our country and it makes no sense because we're projecting onto other countries and we're being a bully. Um, so everything that we want to represent that's good, the mask is coming off of us. It's already, It's been off. The thing about it is what we going to do? What are we going to do as a nation? What are we going to do as a people? And very much as a specific people. All right. That was my Ida B. Wells reading for the day. Like I said, I love Ida B. Wells. And like I said, her being in hiding only because of the article she wrote, which revealed the massacres that was happening at that time is just a reflection of how the narcissist wants to keep you silent. And if you don't stay silent, then they'll stick the police on you, the dogs on you. Uh, and they actually projected all their in madness onto you. They made you the scapegoat. And you have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. And you have to navigate through this maze of madness. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time in the mental house. Bye-bye.